you see the shoes? What is your impression of these boots? It's nice. Okay, and what do you think of the person who wear these? But stop. Honestly, it doesn't matter what you think, what others think, what I think, if this person likes the shoes. Of course, like all people, I'm afraid of condemnations and gossips. I want to stand out in a crowd, but I'm afraid. Even if I dare to put on my favorite red pair of shoes with snake print, I'll be extremely worried. I might recall Lady Gaga's quote about self-confidence and it will make me feel better, but only until I hear whispers behind me. It seems that everyone who looks at me thinks how strange she is, or she is definitely off her head, but it isn't so. The first question in my head when I want to do something provocative, unusual or strange is, how will others react on it? What will others think? It simply doesn't matter when it comes to my personal choice, my first question should always be, what do I like? Six things that are out of my comfort zone is a list of things that make me feel uncomfortable. I fixed all my biggest fears on paper and began to realize them into reality one by one. The hardest thing was with the first task, but with every new achievement it was easier and easier. You can read all the books about self-confidence, but without taking any actions you'll be like a person who read how to ride a bike but have never sat on it. So, one of my tasks was to dance in the first line. And honestly, it was really difficult for me as in the first line there are people who have been dancing for a long time. But I started to visit dance classes only in September. So, you try to repeat the movements, concentrate on the dance, and you have already joined the rhythm. And suddenly these down thoughts in your head. Why is your coach looking at you? You're definitely doing something wrong. Why did it go laugh? So, and next lesson our trainer said. Now we are breaking into pairs and we will dance on the stage. Seriously? We came on stage, the music began and I understood that I forgot in my movements. The most interesting thing is that in life I'm quite confident person, I know my price, but really often I have such situations. At that moment I had thoughts like, oh, what do they think about me? Do I look hopelessness? That's a shame. But in fact I've cheated myself. I just forgot that I cannot read other people's opinions. My thoughts were my assumptions, but the brain took it as a reality. And a month later I spoke with girls from my dancing classes. And they said to me that I didn't even remember about this case. And at that moment I realized how often people don't care about us. Strange look, laughing or whispering doesn't mean anything. Absolutely nothing. It all depends on how we perceive it. And next lesson I stood in the first line. And I still stand there, but I'm not a good dancer. Honestly, it doesn't matter am I or not, cause it is my personal choice and nobody can affect on it. And surprisingly, the task where I had to refuse people five times wasn't easier. This task seems really and really simple. Just say five times no. But when you try it, and when a person looks into your eyes and expects to hear yes, you don't know what to do and just agree. So my first refusal was during German lesson when our teacher said us to write an essay. And my classmate asked me for a help. But I said no, because I understood if I wrote it for someone, I wouldn't have time for, to write it for myself. I don't want to sacrifice myself for someone. Okay, of course, if I had finished writing, I'd have helped, but in such cases, this is really important for every person. Stop always saying yes and start to say no to everything which is contrary to what he or she is dreaming for and what he or she is standing for. 
And finally, I want to tell you about the most terrible child that happened with me. It was just a nightmare. The most difficult task for me was to say compliments to six people. And unfortunately, my first two items were completely unsuccessful. Even very and very unsuccessful. I came to a middle-aged woman and said, Oh, your granddaughter is really cute. And guess what? She asked me, well, why do you think this is my granddaughter? It turned out that it was her daughter. It was really awkward. I just wanted to fall through the ground. I even tried to mend situation with the sentence, oh, sorry, you look stunning, just believe me. And I doubt very much that I did it. And my next fail happened with a little girl who was working somewhere with an old man. But judging from my own experience, I don't want to call him a granddad, who knows? So I stroked her sword bunny, she tore it out and started to cry. And this is the second time when I just wanted to fall through the ground. I looked like a psycho, but I reassured myself that I wasn't doing anything wrong. I just wanted to cheer people up, make them a little bit happier, but didn't always succeed. And the main thing that I wanted to know after my challenge was the answer to the question. How to ignore the opinion of others? First, never listen to the criticism of a person who doesn't live the way you'd like. If a person is at the same level as you or below, he or she doesn't have valuable experience, so they cannot give you super advice that will radically change your life. And their negative opinion shouldn't mean anything to you. <coughs> a second, you cannot be good for everyone. How many people? So many opinions. Whatever you do, someone will still think badly of you. Third, you don't have the ability to read thoughts of other people. Understand for yourself that you can only guess about the opinion of other people, and sometimes you may be wrong. First, people around you don't care about you at all. You are in the navel of the earth. We are the center only for ourselves, and so for each person. And fifth, decide your goals in life. First and foremost, you need to know what is important to you. If you do not break the law, do not threaten your health and do not cause physical or moral harm to others, then what you are doing is quite acceptable and permissible. So don't think what others think of you. You just do what you need and what is necessary. And sometimes exactly condemnation is our biggest motivation. For example, recently my history teacher has said to me, Sorry, but your mark cannot be higher than 10. You cannot get 11. And guess what I was doing that evening? I was learning history, but I really and really hate this subject. It was the matter of principle. Honestly, 10 was completely enough for me. But it is really annoying when people try to make me understand that I cannot get something, that I cannot achieve something, that I cannot do something, even in such little things. Hey, I'm the boss of my life, and I will tell what I can and cannot. And between us, it is much easier to name things that I can do than not, because I'm a person and I can do anything. Thank you.